Testing, testing, one, two, three. Well, here is the beginning of a series of brief five minute videos which will cover all of the cases in the independent study students pathology slide box. This is the very first slide. It's called acute appendicitis. We're going to look at the gross specimens in most cases and we're going to look at the microscopic specimens in all cases. And what we're trying to do is to put you on the other side of a pathologist microscope but rather than being limited to one set of eyeballs at a time we're going to make videos and broadcast them to the whole world perhaps on our servers or perhaps on uh, YouTube uh, with image quality as one of the main concerns. This is what an appendix looks like. Here's an appendix that hasn't been opened and here's an appendix that has been opened. Uh, this is an acute appendicitis. If you remember the four cardinal signs of acute inflammation are heat, redness, swelling, and pain. Well, you can see the redness you can't really tell it's hot, but usually hyperemia is associated with increase in temperature. Swelling means you will have to believe that this appendix is a little bit thicker and fatter than most uh, appendices. And of course the pain you can't really see with your eyes either, but as you know, in the early stage of appendicitis, when the serosal nerve endings are involved, at least the uh, visceral parietal uh, layer, the uh, pain is localized usually to the periumbilical region. When the parietal peritoneum is involved, often then it localizes to where the appendix is, which in most cases would be the right lower quadrant. This is a classical gross specimen of an acutely inflamed appendix. Also notice that the uh, redness and inflammation extend into the periappendiceal fat as well. Now here we are looking at the picture microscopically, hopefully. And here is that same appendix, only now we have a cut section through it. You could see the serosa with some icky stuff covering the outside, which you will see is fibrin. You can see the muscular layers. You could see some uh, stuff inside of the lumen and the mucosa and submucosa is basically uh, very, very lymphoid normally, but in this case you can see the lymphoid follicles are even more numerous and larger. So let's blow it up a little bit. Here is some junk in the lumen. If we went right down to it, you could see that all of this stuff here are neutrophils. And let's prove it. Let's prove it quickly. See, these are all neutrophils. And now as we zoom out, you could see that the inflammatory process is not limited to a bunch of pus cells inside the lumen, but you can also see that it involves the mucosa. Here is some epithelium of the mucosa. It's generally columnar. You can also see areas where the columnar epithelium is gone or ulcerated, which is very, very common. You can also see little nests of epithelium out here in the lumen as they have been eroded off of the surface. You can see the lymphoid follicles in the lamina propria and submucosa are very large and numerous and there's a germinal center and there's the outside of a lymphoid follicle. You can also see that inflammatory cells extend into the uh, muscular layer as well out here besides being in the submucosa out here. You can also see that the inflammatory cells involve the serosa and the serosal vessels are very large and engorged and that's why it looks red. And then you can also see that there's some junk here coating the serosa which are also inflammatory cells. In fact, we're going to go up a little bit at the highest power and you can see these are all chiefly acute inflammatory cells or neutrophil. And here they're intricately mixed with this red granular stuff called fibrin. And here you can see prominently dilated serosal or adventitial vessels. 
Uh, here you can see muscular layers. Here's one that's coming right up at you, so this would have to be longitudinal. And here is one that is forming a uh, sphincter-like action with respect to the lumen, so that's the circular layer. And you can see all of these cells here interrupting the muscular layers are neutrophils. In fact, of the four layers of the appendix, it takes neutrophils within the muscular layer to enable the diagnosis of acute primary uh, appendicitis. And here we are now in the looser connective tissue, the submucosa. Notice there's also inflammatory cells here. You can see a little vein here just totally filled with inflammatory cells. Now we are in the lymphoid tissue of the lamina propria and probably the submucosa. And now you could see we have some remnants of uh, columnar epithelium here in the mucosa and they are also infiltrated by pus cells or neutrophils or polys or PMNs or call them whatever you will, call them granulocytes. Also notice that the pus, which is defined as chiefly uh, fibrin and blood cells, it also fills up the lumen. Also notice, uh, as we come out quickly, that the uh, inflammatory exudate extends right here into the periappendiceal fat as well. And here we have fat, you could recognize that. And you could also recognize the fact that this vein within the fat is loaded with neutrophils. And you can also see that these neutrophils have uh, emigrated or diapedist or whatever word you want to call it into the surrounding uh, fat as well. That's acute appendicitis and hopefully that little video took uh, five minutes or less. Thank you.